Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of being the source of your own happiness. What if I told you right now that you have everything you need to succeed? That you are ready and have the tools just as you are to create the life of your dreams. Would that make you happy? The truth is, many of the most joyful and fulfilled people in the world are the source of their own happiness. They don't rely on their families, partners, how much money they make, or any external circumstances to make them happy. External circumstances are constantly changing, so if we rely simply on those factors, our mood will be constantly changing too. Only we and we alone can choose to be happy. So how do we become the source of our own happiness? Well, we focus only on things that we can control. One of the biggest factors of unhappiness is trying to change things we cannot control. The only thing we can control in life is our own attitude and our actions. Focusing on things that make you happy and having a mind-body balance helps us to live our best life. The more you practice self-love and nurturing our minds with positive thoughts and our bodies with self-care, the more we step into living a happy life. As the saying goes, happiness is an inside job. Don't allow anyone that much power over your life. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. And you were talking about a collaboration, but I also saw you collaborated with the Hallmark Channel um, with Tales of Joy and Tales of Joy 2. So let's talk about the premise of the show and how you came up with it. Um, so we actually came up with the idea of Tales of Joy. I've always wanted to show people kind of behind the curtain of what animal rescue is because not only you know do we hear and see crazy stories about the animals but next up on the show we have chad atkins who is the executive director of paw works an animal rescue and adoption center since the start of the pandemic paw works has taken over 1600 abandoned animals from multiple countries in southern california as well as some other rescue organizations throughout the state yearly chad thank you so much for being on the show today how are you doing I am doing great. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. And I, I just noticed that very, very cute dog on your lap. Who is he? <laughs> this is Story, and she's about four years old. Uh, we rescued her about a week ago, so she's almost ready for adoption. She's very sweet. She looks like she may have had puppies at some point. Um, but yeah, she's, she's a very sweet little terrier girl. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. So let's talk about Paw Works, how it got started. Yeah. So Paw Works started back in January 2014. So we're almost seven years old. Uh, when we when we began, we began with the uh, intent to make our county no kill. And what no kill means is that 90% of the animals that go into the city or county shelter actually come out alive through either transfers to rescues, adoptions, or return to owners. So when we started January 17, 2014, uh, we totally dedicated every resource, money, our time, our energy to just our specific county. And within the first 30 days, we made our county no kill. It's something that it had never been. And so to this date, we are the largest county in California to be no kill. There's only one other county in California and that would be a arena, which has about a third of the population. I see. So I know you've seen a massive increase in adoption. I saw over 400% with COVID. So let, let's talk about that. You know, it's been an insane time. Not only have we all personally had to deal with, you know, self-quarantine, but um, our adoption rates have been through the roof. So when we got hit with the, uh, you know, quarantine rules, it was uh, March 19th. I know the exact date because I actually have two adoption centers and I had to close the doors. Um, and so at that point, I, I was like, how am I going to continue doing business? You know, at the end of the day, a rescue or a nonprofit is still, you know, there's still money that needs to be involved and stuff like that. So we had to figure out how to continue raising funds and continue rescuing animals. So we closed our adoption centers and it was just a crazy you know, mass hysteria of times I've never seen. Like our first weekend alone, we pretty much emptied our shelter. We had about a hundred, either between adoptions and fosters, we had a hundred dogs go out. So, and it hasn't stopped. So we're right now at about a 400% increase in the past six months. 
Yeah. And have you always had a love for animals? Like when did this passion start and why did you decide to be part of this organization? Um, you know, I created Paul Works because two things. I, you know, I grew up with animals, um, never had, you know, I didn't think I was going to be a rescuer, uh, but I actually fell into a job that I created uh, about 20 years ago now. Wow. Um, and I actually became, started my own dog walking doggy daycare service out in San Francisco. And from there, it just kind of snowballed into getting clients and, you know, finding a real love and passion for animals. And one of my clients actually was working for another rescue. And she had asked me to come over and because I was socializing her dog. And that's where it all started. I, I you know, seven and a half years ago. I uh, just said I would dedicate five hours a week to helping socialize the dogs, and I ended up spending the first week 40 hours. Um, so, and it hasn't stopped. So, you know, today I'm the executive director, co founder of Paul Works, and we plan on being, you know, one of the largest grassroots, you know, rescues here in the United States. If we, you know, if I can continue going with, at the pace I'm going. Yeah. That's incredible. You know, you're helping a lot of animals and they need it, especially right now. It's a great time to adopt. What would you say to our viewers that are maybe contemplating adopting a pet? You know, my biggest thing that I always tell any uh, adopter or, you know, future adopter is think about your lifestyle. You know, we're not all going to be in self-quarantine for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. We are going to go back to work. Or we're going to be working eight hours. You know, think about what you typically do pre-COVID, you know, were you 10 hours a day, were you, you know, running in the morning, think about how active you are, think about, you know, are you a Netflix and chill kind of person, or are you, uh, you know, hiking in the mountains kind of, kind of guy or girl. So, you know, really look at that and how a dog will fit. You know, this little dog is, you know, probably can go on some hikes, but she's not going to be going on a, you know, a 20 mile hike with you. So are, are you a more of a big dog who has high energy, you know, really look at that and, you know, how it's going to fall into your life after you know COVID quarantine lifts. Yeah, that's very true because if you have a pet, you have to be able to take care of it. I have two small little budgies who I adore. And you know, even though they're this small, <laughs> they're a lot of work and very messy yeah. and require a lot of attention. So of course I they do. Yeah, so I completely agree. If you have a pet, take care of it, and also it has to match your lifestyle. So I completely agree. Let's talk about the different animals that are available for adoption. Uh, so through Paul Works, we rescue dogs and cats. We're okay. one of the few in California that do both. Um, usually a rescue will focus either on cats or dogs, but mm -hmm. we found, you know, we initially started by just rescuing dogs, but then we saw a huge population of cats just that were not getting serviced and helped. Mm -hmm. So we really started focusing, and especially this year, uh, we created a partnership with PetSmart. So oh. we do all of our cat adoptions through PetSmart, and this year alone, we're at almost a thousand cat adoptions wow. through PetSmart, where last year for the whole year, we did about 200. Wow. So, you know, we're really trying to focus on bettering the lives of dogs and cats. But there's other rescues out there that, you know, do mice and rats and turtles and you <laughs> name it. So if you're looking to rescue and you have a specific passion for a cer certain type of animal, you know, you definitely can probably find it in a rescue. Yeah, and you were talking about a collaboration, but I also saw you collaborated with the Hallmark Channel um, with Tales of Joy and Tales of Joy 2. So let's talk about the premise of the show and how you came up with it. So Christy Foley, who's uh, Pleasant Street Entertainment, her and I are, are good friends, and uh, we both had a pretty good relationship with Hallmark. We've been on Home and Family Channel with their Adoption Ever After initiative and Christy produces a lot of their specials. Um, so we actually came up with the idea of Tales of Joy. I've always wanted to show people kind of behind the curtain of what animal rescue is, because not only you know do we hear and see crazy stories about the animals, but you know you got to be a little crazy and yourself when you're rescuing. You know we're all a little we're all a little nutty, as I like <laughs> to say. So it's a bunch of personalities put into put together all for one passion. So I wanted to kind of show behind the curtain, um, and definitely Hallmark. You know we approached them and they put the first best first. Best. 
those pall works specifically. And we are doing one of our transports like we are doing today. And we go out to the Central Valley and rescue 60 dogs and cats. So it follows that journey from rescue to transport to their care with us and then finally finding their tales of joy in their adopted families. So we, you see the whole process from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And then the second Tales of Joy, we got greenlit for that one, and we partnered with uh, Bissell Pet Foundation, and nine rescues, including Paul Works, went out to Louisiana, a very small town called Opelousas, Louisiana, and we rescued 200 dogs from a very rural shelter. So the shelter started initially as a kill shelter because there's no population going in there to adopt. Mm -hmm. So the executive director about two years ago started, you know, transporting animals out to other states, other towns where they could get the, them adopted. And so what Paul Works and the other rescues did, we came in there and we actually rescued 200 dogs and one cat. And we actually drove each transport back to the respective rescues. And there were seven that went to Michigan, one to Florida, and then Paul Works to California. So it took a three-day transport for us to drive all the way back from Louisiana. Uh, most of these dogs were heartworm positive, and what that is is a parasite that attacks the heart oh. and the lungs. And it's a very, um, can be detrimental and kill the animal. So we did that, got them all heartworm negative, and it's just been showing that process from, again, rescue, transport, to finally finding their forever homes. You know, we're, we're hoping that Hallmark will green light uh, Tales of Joy 3, but, you know, definitely people go on, go on to their website and stream the show. It's not airing it again, but it is on their uh, Hallmark Ever or Everywhere channel, so you can see it anytime. I think that's such a feel-good show, and they better green light the next uh, right. series because, you know, it's Get so it out cute. There and, and make waves and let them know that you want to see more of this kind of TV. Definitely. Let's talk about how you rescue an animal. Where exactly are you guys going to rescue animals and what's the process like? So we primarily rescue from California. Um, most people don't realize this, but California has a huge pet overpopulation problem. So we rescue all the way from San Jose, California, all the way down to the Mexico border. Um, and my goal is to make California no kill before I really expand too much into other states or countries. Mm -hmm. um, I'm all about you know, fixing the problem at home and then taking that solution and putting it out to other areas. So we rescue, this year we're on track to rescue about 2,500 dogs and cats. Wow. And we, we rescue about 95% from very rural shelters out in the central California. Um, and so, you know, that's where all of our animals come from. Most of them come in as strays, you know, they're living on the streets, they get captured. And then we go into these shelters that don't have foot traffic. And if they don't get rescued, then they're probably gonna get euthanized just because there's not the finances to be able to continue caring for them for long term. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the no-kill policy because I didn't even know that they were killing animals. I, I, I didn't know that. And maybe that will encourage more people to adopt a pet if they knew that if people are not adopting that these animals get killed. I, I can't imagine that. So let's talk about that for those people that don't know what happens. And I know you guys changed this policy um, in your state, but let, let's talk about um, what that is. So statistically, about a million dogs and cats get killed in the wow. shelter or euthanized in the shelter every year. Wow. And that can range anywhere from brand new babies um, to the elderly. And it's still happening that, you know, shelters have to euthanize for space. That's the one thing that we, you know, we're trying here in the United States to especially not because there's no more space. So getting the pet overpopulation down through proper spay and neutering, um, you know, there's, it's very difficult for rural areas to find affordable vet care. So that's something that, you know, Paul Works is actually stepping into that in the next six months. We're actually opening our first affordable vet care hospital. Um, so, you know, it really takes education. It takes preventative measures like spay and neuter, vaccines, um, you know, life-saving surgeries, which would normally cost, you know, a private person thousands of dollars. It's really getting those services out to the public so that they don't have to surrender their animals and that they understand that spaying and neutering is, you know, important. So that's really how you lower that. But yeah, about a million dogs and cats get euthanized every year in the United States shelters. Yeah, that, that's terrible. I had, I had no idea 
that that happens. So for someone that wants to adopt, for example, they watch this, this episode, they want to adopt, walk us through the process of what they could expect when adopting a pet with PawWorks. So when you adopt with a pet for PawWorks, uh, we require everybody to adopt in person. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're out of state, we do adopt out of state, we adopt out of country, but you do have to fly all the way to California. Um, there is an interview process, there's a contract, there is an adoption fee, and um, and then we have the right to do a home check if we decide to do it. Um, we do do them sometimes, not always, but that is in your contract that at any day, any point, we can just show up and just inspect your home just to make sure it's safe for the animal. Um, but the interview process is really the key and really getting, getting to know the person who's going to adopt and them understanding the pet that they're adopting and then as much behavior that we know, we will always let the, you know, adopter understand. Yeah, I think that's great that you're also interviewing people to make sure that they're also a fit because, you know, these animals have to be in, in a good, loving home. So I think that's really great that you guys are interviewing people. Um, let's talk about the most rewarding part of your job, because I'm sure this has been so rewarding, you know, saving all of these animals. So let's, let's talk about that for you. Um, you know, the part that really is the most rewarding is when you really see your community come together and the actual change happen. You know, when we when we were able to make Ventura County no kill and really see that, you know, more rescues started jumping on the bandwagon to assist and the community got involved, you know, just seeing that camaraderie uh, was really a great feeling. And then, you know, personally, when, when you see a dog and you rescue a dog and they're, they're high strung and they're stressed out or they might be aggressive and then finally seeing uh, that moment, and I don't know if you've ever seen this in your dogs, uh, but they're like laying down and they just take this big breath of relief mm -hmm. and you can watch it. You can literally watch their bodies decompress and just kind of take that. <sighs> and yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm not going to get hurt. I don't have to worry anymore. Um, personally, that is one of the most rewarding things when it comes to, you know, an animal. Uh, but just seeing my community come together and really make a change, whether it's for the animals, whether it's for kids, you know, when we all work together, we can all make a difference. Yeah, I 100% agree. And speaking of the community and making a difference, how can people get involved with PawWorks and donate? You know, you can go on our website. Uh, social media is huge for anybody these days. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, we have a YouTube channel. Um, we do it all. You know, you have to this day and age. And, you know, you just, even as simple as just sharing a post, you don't understand how much that can make a difference because there might be a dog that is getting overlooked and you share that one post and someone who's been looking for that type of dog or that it touches their heart. You know, we've had so many dogs adopted and cats adopted like that where it's just touched their hearts and they slowly, you know, came and adopted from us and they found this animal who was shut down, scared, or even at times aggressive because they weren't doing well in this type of situation they get into a home and they just blossom into these loving animals um, but you can always volunteer if you're local you can donate and it's not just money there is amazon wish list uh, that you can donate from we always need supplies uh, but you know like any business you know finances are key and so financial donations and whether it's five dollars or you know five hundred dollars you know every bit of money that gets donated goes directly to the rescue care and adoption of our animals. Okay, well thank you so much, Chad, for being on the show today. We will share the link so people can donate, but thank you so much for doing what you're doing because I think it's very important and keep up thank the great you. work. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.